So this is what my YouTube setup used to look like. This is what we're looking like now. Let me show you how to do it for yourself. What's up guys, I hope you enjoyed that new intro. It's a new one for 2020. There's only three months left, but we finally got one done for you. Took a bit of time, I'm sorry. <laughs> But today we're going to be talking about all the aspects of my YouTube setup, how I set it up, how you can set it up for yourself, different things you should be looking for when setting up a YouTube channel, you know, all that jazz. Quick disclaimer before, I'm sorry I haven't been able to make those really cool looking educational videos like the photo battle, the cinematic B-roll challenge was fun, meeting up and seeing people just because I am still immunocompromised so I actually can't go out and see people yet. But that'll be changing in about a month and a half so you just got about like four more, you know, little educational videos like this before we can get into the fun stuff again. Okay, so tip number one is going to be depth. Now as you can see on screen, I used to not have this tip bang down on my videos, but you really want to create depth between you and your background. For example, you see me here. The background is super far away. I've positioned myself in one corner of the room pointing at the opposite corner, the furthest corner away. That's what created this amount of depth. So you really want to kind of position your camera in a place where your subject, there's going to be a lot of space behind them so you can separate them from background and it's very easy to see them. Another thing that can help with depth is getting a good camera with a good lens. The camera actually doesn't matter. It's the lens. If you're a filmmaker, which I hope you are a filmmaker, if you're watching these videos, the lower the f-stop number, so if it's f1.8, f1.4, f1, f2.8, that's going to create more depth when you're at that aperture. If you guys want to know about this stuff, you can check out my TikTok. I have a camera basics tutorial on there that explains all this stuff. Yeah, the key is just really separate yourself from the background using depth so your background is nice and blurred out. Final tip, there's also different softwares that can do this manually. For example, when you take a photo in portrait mode on the iPhone, it's actually just selecting the subject and then blurring everything out manually. It doesn't look as great, but it does isolate the subject. Number two, we got lighting. So I'm just going to walk you through all the basic lights you're going to need if you want to clean YouTube setup looking like this. The first one, the main one is going to be our key light, as you can see on screen right now. So there's there's two different key lights I recommend. First of all, called the Rembrandt lighting. It's going to be a 45 degree angle. I'm sure you've heard of this in the filmmaking industry, but you just want to put it at a 45 degree angle from the camera. So in between this camera, straight to your left, you're going to want to put it right in between that. And then you're just going to want to point it right at your face. This will create that nice triangle, as you can see right here, kind of. I do have a light on the other side, so it's kind of messing up. As you can see on screen, a lot of Hollywood films as as well have the Rembrandt lighting. The other light I recommend, this one's actually kind of cool because it'll create a cool catch light in your eyes, but it is a ring light. So it's pretty much a light that goes all around your lens and it's gonna light you up and it's gonna create these little rings in your in your eye. This is really popular on TikTok because you can easily fit a phone in between the ring light and then make really cool videos. So if you are making little TikToks and stuff, I definitely recommend a ring light or a simple key light like this. This is a simple diffuser box. You obviously want to get it diffused if you can. Just a little like you can even just put like a sheet above it. The second light is a kick light or you could do a fill light. Some people don't like to do a fill light. What a fill light is, is going to be the opposite side of your key light. So for example, right here, you can see how there is still light on the side because I do have a fill light lighting me up right there. This kind of uh, removes the contrast and dramaticness of your face. If you are going for a softer YouTube channel about makeup or anything like that, and you want your face completely lit up. Me, I like drama in my face. I'll have a couple shadows. You see right under the hat as well. I have some shadows and also my noses are not evenly lit, but you can also, instead of skipping the fill light, or you can have both these lights, you can have a back key light. I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. Okay, now they call this a kick light and pretty much what it's going to do is it's going to light up the back of your head and your hairline. It's going to kind of separate you from the back. So as you can see there, it gets a little bit bright there. So now that I'm kind of separated from that black background that I'm kind of pointing at right now. So this is before and this is after. Finally, don't be scared to add a little temperature to light. As you can see, the kick light is kind of more of an orange color compared to this clean white of my key light. This kind of adds drama to your face. I love doing this, making my kick light or my key light a little more moody, a little more uh, OCT, orange color temperature. I think that's what they call in the film industry. Okay, the final tip for you guys is gonna be about your background. Now, now that we got your lighting good, we got our subject nice and isolated, we're gonna be talking about our background real quick. So keys to make a good background. Number one, I love love putting in background lights. As you can see, there's a bit of blue, there's a bit of red right there. That is called a background light. This is going to light up your background. I usually recommend making it a cool color like this one. So for example, I got the blue and the red. If you make it a simple white color, it's going to kind of look a little cheesy in my opinion. It's just going to look like your background is super lit up. This adds a lot more contrast, adding a little color, a little eye catching color to your video is always a good thing to do. So what I do is I just hop to the dollar store. I grab one of those little films, those blue films, those red films, you can get all sorts of colors, cover your light and it'll completely change the color. I make sure it's LED because LEDs don't get as hot so they won't be melting your little plastic pieces if you can. I'm going to put links below to all the lights I own um, and all the lights I recommend you buying, but that's what I recommend you guys do. 
Now, other than lights in your background, you wanna make sure you have a simple background, not too much to pull your eye to. I like to keep my background as dark as possible other than the colors. For example, you can see my bed here. This is my bed frame right here is black. And I line that up right with myself so that I am nice and separate from the background. I don't get pulled in to the background compared to if I were to line myself up with this whiteboard right here, then I would seamlessly kind of go into the background. It wouldn't look as great, especially because I have this gray or almost looks white hat. Okay, and then the last and final tip for you guys is that you want to put interesting things in your background. I like to keep it simple, but you can put interesting things in the background. Some people, a lot of YouTubers actually put their YouTube setup right in front of display cabinets, display stores. For example, you got action figures. You got those Ikea five by five blocks. I think it's good to do because then people can kind of know what you're into, what you like. You know, you put a, or a film camera on your table or whatever. Then people will kind of know what you're into. Me, myself, obviously I didn't do that. And also I kind of want space in my room because my room is where I shoot my YouTube videos. I still need to sleep here too. I I don't have that, but I do have this whiteboard here and it's super blurred out, but there is a quote on there. So sometimes I will use that whiteboard to write things down. If I were to add a little bit less depth then people could read it, just try to put some interesting things in your background, but don't overdo it. Just put some things that maybe will help the viewer know what you're kind of into. There's going to be no question of the day for you guys today. I just want you guys to tag me with your before and after or just your after YouTube setup. If this video helped you, show me what you created with the tips in this video. So without further ado, my name is Indax Berlay you know, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I super appreciate it. We got cool videos coming out very shortly. I'm sorry. I'm still immunocompromised, but I will be coming back. So without further ado, creators, keep creating. Peace.